would fit a doll, a bird, a cat. But they are powerful, he says, shape changers, dance all night slippers. And she remembers a friend who thought she had magic sandals, danced with a god, then married him, told her sons they could run faster until the youngest raced an avalanche and lost. It is potlatch season. Dancers break the ice to bathe in cold rivers, and shivers run through her, laughter, followed by lamentation. One shoe changes shape and fits. The other note drops. 
<laughs> the person I'm referring to is uh, Michelle Trudeau. Who, uh, Margaret Trudeau was my, my friend when I was growing up. And um, she had a pair of sandals. She called her magic sandals, and they helped her uh, on the husband. <laughs> Um, I remember talking to Mady a few years ago, it seems, and um, the, the idea for this book, um, including Kelly and Carl together, um, was just an idea in Kelly's mind, but not in Kelly's mind, in Mady's mind, and here we are tonight celebrating the book and Mady's vision. So I think this is a wonderful thing, and I know it wasn't an easy thing for Mady, um, it took a lot of uh, determination and hard work and vision. And so I thank Mady for, for persisting in this, um, with this project and bringing the book into the world. So I'm going to read two short pieces. Um, I wouldn't exactly call them poems, but they are responses to a couple of um, Carl's amazing uh, um, images or paintings. So this one on page 48, um, I saw rock, I saw a rock wall, and I don't know why, but I saw a human figure as well, a woman. So it's called Igneous. There's a granite wall on which she likes to sit and drink her tea, and inside that wall, pockets of cooling magma. Once she was molten, but now even she has solidified. And the second one, um, is on page 50, 51 is the painting, and it looked like lampshades and light. And at the same time as um, I was um, trying to think of something, or trying to respond to this image, um, a friend of mine had just fallen in love yet again um, with a young man. And so these two things came together. I know something wildly geometric occurred at the lamp shop, 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 something gray and rectangular, streaked and smeared, blue and yellow, all that light. So, who is it this time, Carita? Is it the lamp shop boy with the soul patch, chin, and operatic mouth? <laughs> When I was trying to think of poems to write for these pictures, I was um, walking downtown and I saw a Buddhist monk waiting for a bus. And somehow that night I went home and these poems just came. So it was amazing. It was something that just was meant to be. So the first one is on um, page 66. Picking blueberries on the barrens, hot August afternoon. Suckle my month old son. Blueberries, blue fairies, fairy blue caps, bluebells on the barren. And the next one is on page 68. Um, sun rises, a new laid egg, still warm under speckled feathers. I reach under, crack open the truth. And I'll read one more. This one particularly inspired me because it looked to me like a, some sort of primitive lodge. Full moon seeks the edge. I dance in the lodge. Gaia, Gaia, Gaia grounds out our future in her hands. Thank you. Um, I, uh... I saw in the particular painting that is on page 75 of the text, I saw sort of steampunk kind of um, telescopes and um, I sort of responded to the geometric shapes in that and I called it observations. And it's in the form of a palindrome so the poem can be read forward and backwards. They rub their midnight hands and in the cold take turns to spy on the moons of Jupiter, slaves to gravity, like everything else. Like everything else, slaves to gravity, on the moons of Jupiter, take turns to spy, and in the cold, they rub their midnight hands. 
Uh, and uh, the second one is on the page following, which is also a palindrome. And I saw in this particular um, painting a, a forest much like the forest that uh, is uh, out in our cabin. So I think I was projecting a little bit in that regard. And I've spent so much time there that I simply wrote out of my, um, my love of the forest. And it's, this poem is called Elegy. And it, too, is a, a palindrome. Elegy. Making love in September once, the leaves fallen, falling, the world all around dying, when they were young and didn't believe they were dying too, they were dying too, and didn't believe when they were young, the world all around dying, falling, the leaves fallen in September once, making love. Oscar Wilde says the wallpaper has to go because of the flames consuming his room. His arms raised in beggary, he watches the night from his cell, the landscape lit for a moment by lightning. And the other poem, I have no idea what I was seeing at the time. This is a while back. It is bleak. I don't know, if, is the poem bleak? I don't know. And maybe his hair is Carl's. <laughs> it's Carl's hair. Uh, who swung a hammer? Who swung a hammer, building a dark fire on the horizon? Who fed the animals at the blue window when the hunger arrived? Who stops to comb the northern lights from his hair? Now you can cough. <laughs> just met Mady tonight, and I didn't know Kelly or Carl, so I feel incredibly blessed to be here. And I do, although it sounds like a cliche, it does uh, feel as if um, I get to know uh, Kelly a little bit through this project and these poems. Um, she was lovely. Yeah, she sounds lovely. Um, and it was also a really lovely thing to be able to look at this work. and. To just stare at it, to have no preconceived idea of where a poem comes from, and suddenly to see, and just to write what was there. So, the first one is Red Cedars. Tell me again, what was it like to lie awake, listening to the cries deep in the forest of the wild boy with his cannibal heart? The, the next painting, you can see it, it's got wonderful colors in it. When I looked at this, I saw this world open, and I saw um, all the things that I'll, I'll read in a second. Now when I look at it, I see none of them. <laughs> so it's like something opens and closes. And for a moment there was an opening, and I guess in a way that's what poetry is for me. It opens and then closes, and, and then I have no idea where it came from. Life drawing. There was a nude in there. I know it. The long-necked horse and tattooed man are distractions only. While she was slipping out of her pink chiffon dress, you were lost in red. Is that the moon in the left-hand corner of a mirror? Or a rash of the night sky beneath which a nude waits in naked light? It's about um, stopping at Cathedral Grove on the way up to Long Beach. And uh, this painting over here by Carl um, reminded me of Cathedral Grove. So it's the one that I took as inspiration for this poem. Oh, uh, it's on page 108. And the painting's on page 109. And whenever I go up to Cathedral um, Grove now, I always stop there on my way to Long Beach and think of Kelly, remember her, as I'm walking through the trees. I can see her because she was very much a tree person. And uh, so I can still see her there. So in this poem, I'm speaking to Kelly after she died. Cathedral Grove. 
Whenever you arrive in my thoughts, bringing a memory of home, the beach, hospice, does some trace of you where you are now reach from beyond this earth and sun and moon? You love the connection between one being and another. Your face, when you stop to look in a tide pool, full of tenderness and curiosity and awe. You told me your favorite word was and. From you I learned to notice small creatures, the snail on the wet handrail, the beetle's tracks in the sand. Now you are gone and I try to notice them on my own. I scatter your ashes, here where the earth lies still and rich in loam, may you find the wind and green November. This forest was your face, and the place beyond time where you were born. I've been there. Seen the fractured planes of light soaring between mountain sides, heard the stone tingle in nervous delight as stars rise above cruel peaks into the night skies. I've been there, watched life flicker instant by ecstatic instant between shivering pine needles and heard water trickle somewhere beyond the darkness, always beyond. You got that one, didn't yes. you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. This one was, um, comes out of the picture. There's no way out of it. It's called Early Morning Tremor. And as we watched, a finger twisted, fierce and muscular from the ground, feet cracked and scarred in broken sandals, as if the mountainside itself had swelled. And as it glared at us, its eyes, Blazing with malevolent rage, its breath snarling through clamped teeth. The sky shuddered, rocks cowered, rivers fell silent, trees and flowers cringed, all living beings fled behind their shadows, and the whole valley shook its eyes closed in tight terror. Waiting until at last the creature spoke. Of what it said we understood not a word, and yet its mocking sneer left its meaning clear. Next time. And this is the night riders. Within my fence is peace. Without the myriad riders howl in frustrated rage. Within my fence I have gathered wife, children, friends, those whom I wish to protect from the swirling smoke. Without the flames roar higher, the riders hiss and snarl, while within, all is calm. Mm -hmm. Got two little more. Just like the laugh of an exultant child, discovering the truth its parents <laughs> cannot see. Mm -hmm. And if you look closely, eyes almost closed, hold your breath tight, start to hum silently and sway, sway, just like a hemlock in February wind. Nothing may happen, but at least you know you're on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> microwaves knows about World War II and I saw images from that in the painting so um, night after night bombs fall on the cold black place but the bridge stands firm protecting the river holding it together like blood within the veins but there's also a fun side to him um, on page 82, 
The butterscotch giraffe wrestles a chocolate-coated branch as he contemplates his blackberry and licorice the landscape. <laughs> and on page 84, um, abstract 58, this is sort of contrast between dark and light here. The trees are cold without their leaves. Their branches tremble in the midnight air. Black tar stains the rocks and drips slowly, stickily, into a pool of sunlight soap. <laughs> and the final one is back on page 80. Um, I, I don't know, it just, uh, the image struck, <laughs> struck me. Uh, mm. The snow is melting. The polar bear faces extinction. Is that why he took up smoking? <laughs> <laughs> Right at the center, in the deep moments, the city is dark with grief. But there is light at the center, an animated joy. Faces in conversation, a woman sings. Flags blaze glory, and a bridge appears, spanning a chasm of unknowing, bright with the possible. Brightness at the core, flag rays stream, a bridge spans the chasm of unknowing, bright with the possible, brightness at the core. Oh. Bill Bessa. I got a feeling, uh, I got a feeling we're gonna uh, make this and strong. We got the holy breeze coming through the trees. We got the holy breeze coming through the trees. We got the all the love and our soul and our heart of Shania. Our through our soul is to Shania. And the green wind is moving up through the summer trees. And the green wind is moving through the summer trees. And the green wind is just moving all through the summer trees. Ya kura shimini ya, haya kura shimini ya, haya kura shimini ya, haya kura shimini ya. Oh, yo kura shimini ya, haya kura What's new? What's new? A hat on 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 a hat a river of gold is flowing through all our hearts. Ah, 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 ah,
Thank you very much. I hope you're recording this. <laughs> I don't know if my transmission thing was on. <laughs> Is anyone's transmission thing on? I don't know. I think it was, maybe. Were you? Yeah. Cool. Were you? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I said, you can't tell where I'm looking, can you? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Earth E We had such an amazing time there, didn't we? <laughs> Running with the swallows, our brother the cougar, and the very moody winds. Mm. Deep forest of the wolf mind. Can we know? It's another mind, eye staring, staring into the night shining iris, the breath of the cold and quizzical lethal teeth and tongue. Dream ghost dance. You wake up and they're still dancing. Inky blue dancer, almost diaphanous in ice and snow. Do you see through the sun? Do you see through the curve? of the glacier. Sharks, meditation in the sky, and coming are coming, incoming are coming toward you. The flight and laughter of no image, no name, no representation. I wrote these in May's garden. Wow. And, and I lived in her little hut. And it was very idyllic, very hot summer. And then I would come into the house after meditating and stuff, and maybe would be making food, delicious food. And then I would, she had a desk there, and she had paper there, and she had a pencil there. You didn't have to do that part. It was amazing. You know, Where is the pencil? <laughs> and then each day I would write one or two of these. Oh, several. Several. Always before a meal. <laughs> Hearing the color and seeing the touch through the ribbon of becoming. What comes before words? What we see before we call anything or naming song or describe the morning sight and night glade, anyway call. Moon skies, say bubbles of moon air, breathe a sweeping arc in our heads. Flight of ecstasy, ung, lasting ting, orange yellow energy climbing in the southern mist before remembering a sting. A sting ting in a, a giga, a giga, a giga, a tin. Those are the ones that maybe inspired me to write in mm. for Kelly. Thank you very much. Bill's poem, Letting the Brush Dance, is I think one of the best poems I've ever read on the process of creating action painting or abstract art. And I do encourage you to read that slowly and carefully because it tells it all. So I'd like to thank you all very, very much for...